directors of Haverford Townships, candidates forum this evening. We are very pleased to introduce the candidates for commissioners for wards two, four, six, and eight. For the second ward, Mario Oliva and Allison Bausman. For the fourth ward, Bobby Marone and Dan Siegel. For the sixth ward, Ronald O'Connor and Larry Holmes. And for the eighth ward, Gerard Hart. Chris Connell had to be absent. He was in Harrisburg and couldn't get home. But someone is going to read his three-minute statement for all of us. This forum will be run in accordance with the nonpartisan League of Women Voters format. We will begin with three-minute statements by each candidate, followed by questions submitted by people in the audience. You will see people going up and down the aisles with cards and little pencils. And you can write down uh, any questions that you have and submit them to those same people going up and down. Please make sure your questions are appropriate for our township commissioners and not national issues such as ta U.S. taxes, Social Security, and so on. You may direct your question to all the candidates or to those from a specific ward. The other candidates would still have the same amount of time, which is a minute and a half, to respond to each question. Since Chris Connell from the 8th Ward could not be here tonight, Gerard Hart will not be able to answer questions directed just to the 8th Ward. Then the candidates will have two minutes each for closing statements at the end. We'll try to end by 8.45. Our moderators tonight come from our community. I'd like to introduce Chris Whiting, President of the Haverford Township Civic Council. also from the Civic Council. They will collect the written questions and read them to the candidates. They will not choose a question if it's already been asked, but otherwise will read what you have written. We ask that everyone in the audience be respectful of our moderators and candidates, and that you refrain from applause and verbal comments until after all the candidates give their closing statements at the end. Thank you for doing this. I'd like to remind all of you here and those watching at home that election day is Tuesday, November 5th, and voters do not need to have a photo ID for this election. The courts decided not to enforce this new law at this time. However, if you're a new voter voting for the first time, you will be asked to show a photo ID. Or if you are a, another, a voter who's, work, who's now voting at a new precinct, you will be asked for a photo ID. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. In case of a large turnout, you must be in line by 8 p.m. to vote, but you will get your turn. This forum will be broadcast in a few days on the local cable channels in Haverford Township. Now let's begin with opening statements, beginning with the second ward. And thank you very much, Chris and Ken.
those who have come before us. When I first ran for commissioner eight years ago, I did so because I thought I could help to make this township, which I grew up in and have always called my home, even better. I promised the residents of the second ward that I would work hard to be responsive to them and represent their interests. I believe I have kept that promise. Working with the other members of the Board of Commissioners, Township officials, and many volunteer organizations in the community, I strive each day to keep my commitment to the residents of the Second Ward. As I go around the Township, and especially the Second Ward, I feel an excitement in the air. People are proud to live in the Township. People recognize the Township is on the move. The improvements in the Manoa Business Area, the development of the quarry, the community facilities that have to reserve, the trails in Lanark and other areas of the township, the new YMCA in place of the closed down Bullock factory. All these are the fruits of our collective efforts. My hope and goal is to continue to serve the residents of the second ward and make what is already good even better. Thank you. I too would like to talk about some of the things that we're doing really well, some of the things that make our township great. The beautiful new YMCA, I'm so proud of all the people who work very hard to make that happen. We have a rec center that is first rate in the, in the uh, community recreation center up at Haverford Reserve. It's unmatched, it's beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. We also still have challenges to discuss if we want to move forward and be the best that we can be in the next 50 years. We have infrastructure challenges. Our township buildings need addressing, and our Board of Commissioners is currently discussing that. Our library has mechanical, electrical, HVAC issues that are going to cause those systems potentially to fail in the very near future. Prior boards have discussed this. Uh, and know that it was a hot button issue in my opponent's first term. And we've continued to band-aid the issue or to kick the can down the road. And I just, I, I read a book this summer called Confronting Suburban Poverty in America, talking about how suburban communities can be the best that they can. And I'd like to share a quote tonight from that book. It cites a study that identified inner ring first suburbs as places built early in or toward the middle of the 20th century. While many of these communities continued to be healthy and stable, over time others became home to aging infrastructure and inadequate housing stock, as well as deteriorating schools and commercial corridors. And I just remember reading that over and over and thinking, I'm really proud of what's going on in the real estate market in Haverford Township. And we have a first-rate school district. And things such as turning the abandoned bubblegum factory into the YMCA and addressing other commercial corridors within the township, of which we have many. We're doing all of that really well. But if we're missing a piece of this puzzle with addressing our infrastructure in the best way possible, then could it all fall apart? And it's a big, big concern of mine. So um, I will just say that my intent is to listen to all residents and communicate early and often. That's not always easy to do. I want to use technology to do that and use social media to attract folks to our township and potentially finally see the business development committee that has been discussed by our board of commissioners come to fruition. I think that our township needs a business manager's vision and I think that we need to engage every resident. I'm so proud to see the number of people here tonight. Everyone who's here and everyone who's watching should be proud of their level of engagement in this community. And I just want to thank you for letting me run and for joining us tonight. Rosemary, 
and the League of Women Voters, as well as those here tonight and those watching at home. I see tonight as a great opportunity to share with you why I am running for commissioner from the fourth ward. When my wife Bernadette and I were newlyweds, we started looking for a place to start our family. We looked in Drexel Hill, Upper Darby, Broomall, and Havertown. And after six months of diligently looking, Bernadette told me that we would be living at 1513 Linwood Drive in Havertown. I, being a businessman, looked at tax rates, home values, school system, police and fire services, knowing that I have daughters someday shopping, and Havertown has that and so much more. This is an important election. If we want to continue on the path of lower, keeping lower taxes than the surrounding communities, we have to be good shepherds of the tax money that we collect. We need to squeeze services out of every dollar just like you do in your personal budget. Our family lives within its means, and if you elect me, I promise to be accountable to you to explain in, in English why I vote the way I vote on any issue. I have seen some commissioners vote present. I will never do that. You elect a commissioner to represent you, not just show up for meetings. I have seen some commissioners lecture and admonish people when they come to a board meeting. There's no place for that. Every resident, regardless of party, is welcome to any meeting that I conduct. And if one of those scheduled sessions does not work, we'll have another meeting in the township. And if all else fails, you're welcome to my dining room table and we can work it out over coffee. I'll bring a fresh perspective to every issue brought to the board. I will analyze each item and ask many questions to determine if one, is it good for the resident Two, what is the cost? Three, will it bring jobs or keep jobs in the township? They're just some of the questions that I'll bring to the session. Thank you. Thank you to the League. I view this debate as an opportunity for residents of the fourth ward to evaluate the candidates' visions and their records. When I was elected in 2008 and 2009, I promised to work for government that would be transparent and open, that would be responsive and fiscally responsible, and that would focus on saving money without reducing our services or eliminating uh, needed infrastructure issues. I also promised to improve the township's aging infrastructure, to visit and communicate regularly with residents, and to work with businesses and others, as I am the only businessman on the Board of Commissioners who has a business in the township. I did all of that, and I do all of that with one goal. That's to allow residents to know what the commissioners do so that they can evaluate how well we do it. Voters can see the results. My website has nearly 100,000 visitors. Nearly 1,100 residents subscribe to my email newsletters and I communicate with constituents frequently and in many forms, quarterly print newsletters. I return every phone call and answer every email. People say lightning quick. My newsletters focus on fourth ward issues and concerns, but I'm not afraid to discuss township issues regardless of how controversial they may be. And I have visited 95% of the residential addresses in the ward this year alone. I've also worked with the township to save money without cutting services, using technology to be more efficient while reducing the cost of paper and all of the other expenses that you have with it. And I have been called by some of my colleagues the most fiscally conservative commissioner on the board. And I've also continued my long-standing commitment to community revitalization, traffic improvements, and other concerns. But equally important for a commissioner is the need to build coalitions. Township issues aren't political. They're local and personal. They're traffic, they're the library, they're trash, they're recycling, they're snow plowing, they're curbside leaf collection, and they're tree trimming. And I've done this with one vision, that Haverford Township can be better, that we must continue to be a place where families like Bobby Marones want to move to, because that's important. And we have to do so with each other. Four years ago, I asked you to vote for my experience and my vision. 
You've now had five years to evaluate my activities, and you've had five years to evaluate the results of my efforts. This year, I ask you to re-elect me so that we can continue the journey and continue to work together to make Haverford Township an even finer community. Thank you.
Ann and I, as well as our children, have developed many wonderful friendships here. Our school system has helped our three oldest children go to college and on to careers. But perhaps even more important to me is the way our community welcomed our three youngest children with open arms when they joined our community, well, our family. I feel lucky to be part of this community. Despite all the positive aspects of life in Hammer Town, no community can stand still. Our lives are not static, nor is the world around us. I want to see Havertown maintain its great sense of community while adapting to a 21st century environment. As you've heard, much of our infrastructure is aging. Failing storm sewers have resulted in flooding. Our library is in need of extensive and expensive renovations. Our police station and township building reportedly are in bad condition. These are not new problems, but have been ignored for too long. All of this points to the need for, to develop a strategic plan for our future rather than approach problems with band-aids. Let's have an open discussion with all constituents about the challenges facing our township and a chart of course, course to our future. I've been a family physician for nearly 30 years, working in mostly underserved communities. As a township resident, I've been extensively involved in coaching youth sports for the last 20 years. Currently serve on the boards of the Brookline Baseball and Softball Association as well as Haverford Heat American Legion Baseball Program. Coaching has many of its own rewards, uh, both on the field and especially years later when much taller and sometimes with much deeper voices, young people come up and fill me in on their lives and on their families. I'm running now because I believe my engagement, my civic engagement and life experience would help keep Havertown be the great community that produced these children and mine. My work as a family physician requires me to be open-minded, to problem solve, and to communicate. I believe all these skills would help me work with fellow residents and commissioners to meet and solve the challenges that our town faces. I ask for your support and vote on November. opening statement tonight as he could not be here. He is in Harrisburg on business and does apologize for being unable to attend. I would like to thank all of you for coming out tonight as well as those that are watching on television. I apologize for not being able to be here in person, but I am out of town on business. I would also like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight's event. It is amazing how fast four years can pass. But when you enjoy what you're doing and appreciate the people that you serve, the time is of little importance compared to what we've accomplished in that time. I'm again asking for the privilege to serve as your commissioner of the 8th Ward. When I took the oath of office for the 8th Ward Commissioner in 2010, my political philosophy was to be open and honest and provide the no excuses government you deserve. I continue to believe that government is a we thing and not a me thing. The past four years have given me the wonderful opportunity to get to know and appreciate many of our neighbors. Being involved in the appointment process for many of our uh, commissions and townships boards based on their merit rather than their political affiliation is gratifying to me as your representative. The inclusive nature of the boards and the commissions should give all of you in Haverford Township the confidence that we are listening to your concerns and value your input regarding the future of our great township. Haverford Township will continue to face challenges. With increasing demand on our volunteers, emergency services will be continually evolving. With my experience in being both volunteer and in career positions in emergency services, I feel I have the proper perspective and knowledge to address these challenges. The combination of time and the growth of Haverford Township has stressed our infrastructure to its limits. The bureaucracy in tackling these challenges has proven complex. Over the last four years, I have diligently addressed our concerns while continuing to solicit county, state, and federal government assistance. 
Municipal services have a direct impact on the high quality of life that our families, businesses, and visitors have come to expect and appreciate in Haverford Township. With persistent assessment and optimization of these services, we will continue to be fiscally responsible and will be able to offer our Haverford Township community a high quality of life for generations to come. When you go to the polls on November 5th, I ask for your continued support and afford me the privilege of once again representing Haverford's greatest community, where the greatest neighbors in the township live, in the 8th Ward. I think everywhere, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry he could not be here tonight, but he'd like to extend uh, his apologies and ask for everyone's vote on November 5th for the 8th Ward. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, which is your question, um, answered by the candidates. So um, I want to just let me give you guys some advance warning as to how we're going to do this. We're going to switch up the order every time because the same people don't always go first. So um, for this first question, we're going to start with you, Mr. Siegel, and we'll go to your opponent, and then we'll work down the table this that way. So I'll call on you. Uh, that's give you a little bit of a warning. So, uh, and just for members of the audience, uh, we're consolidating your questions. Some of you are asking similar questions, uh, and we aren't going to have time to deal with every question that's been submitted. So we're consolidating and grouping them. So this first question is a big one. I have up here um, something like six different cards, but the, the, the theme of these cards is about the financial priorities going forward. And several of you mentioned that some infrastructure needs. There was specific mention about uh, library, for example. Um, so a township building was mentioned, uh, the administration building. Uh, in our questions, people are asking about police station, roads and bridges. So uh, what our audience is looking for is your statement of financial priorities. We're, we're not going to be able to do everything in the next four years. Um, they want to know what your priorities are. What, what are the, of those major projects that we talked about, things, police station, administration, building, library, um, other infrastructure, roads and bridges, sewers, let us know what's important. What what do you think the, the priorities are? Mr. Siegel. Thank you. Uh, the, dealing with priorities is one of the toughest things we have to do because we have certain obligations, such as our pensions and our police and other employees that we have to pay. But we also have to look, and I view the priorities sort of as what's important about the township, our quality of life. That means the things that make this such a great place to live and making certain that we not only continue to have those priorities, whether it's our essential services, trash, sewers, those types of things, but also the other things that really attract residents and help preserve and improve our property values. That means we have to address aging infrastructure, but do it financially responsibly. We have to uh, build facilities like the rec center, which has gotten national attention, and we have to attract businesses whether it's the Y or businesses like the Giant. But we do so by prioritizing and encouraging people to want to be here. We do that by making certain that we have proper facilities, not only for those, but for our employees. Because right now, they are working through an aging infrastructure. In the last four years, the property committee has taken on those tasks, and we recognize that in order to preserve and improve, the other priorities must be considered. That's in police station, a township building, and the library, because those are as integral as everything else. But it's a tough challenge because we have to put them all together and still preserve taxes. Thank you. Well, I visited 500 houses so far, families since I've gotten involved in the campaign. And it is not an exaggeration to say that when I talk to the residents, the families that live in the fourth ward, their first priority is to keep our taxes as low as possible. 500 to zero. I've asked every one of them if the option was to build a new police building 
or a library. And that potentially could raise your taxes, in addition to what you're paying, $3,960 over the course of a mortgage. Would you want that? 500 to zero. So my approach to priorities, and I understand a little bit about technology because of a former career, and a little bit about construction. So I would say the first thing we need to do is to reevaluate what we have and determine if we can repair, replace parts of it, but not literally raise everything and build monuments with pretty plaques and boards on them that have commissioners and architects and builders' names on them. That's the priority that I have, being a physical junkyard dog. Thank you. Mr. Holmes? Um, I'm not elected to this office to go to 500 doors and ask everybody what they want to build. I was elected to this office to exercise my judgment on what I thought of how a government should operate. We're a government right now that has had significant personnel changes. Oh, I'm talking to my, I'm talking to my water bottle. I'm sorry. Um, we are a township. NSA is listening. Yeah, we are. We're a township that has undergone significant changes in terms of personnel, in terms of how we have changed our procedures, in terms of how this board has operated. For the last four years, we have worked with work sessions where we discuss every piece of legislation before this board one week before we have another meeting. And the purpose of all that, the point of all that, is to say that for the last eight years, we have significantly improved the way we do things here and we have improved the personnel who do those things for us, but they still operate in ridiculous 19th century surroundings and environments. And it is not fair to try to squeeze more services out of people while they sit next to a bucket that collects rainwater in a building that should not house the government of Haverford Township. It is our priority to fix all of our physical assets, and it is a job that was ignored by so many boards before us. 12 years ago when I appeared before the board um, as bond counsel in a, in a transaction we did back then, I was appalled at what I saw on that board, people not willing to make hard decisions and spend money, and as a result, we ended up with infrastructure uh, defects and repairs that cost far beyond what they would have cost if we just properly maintained or updated or modernized our assets. And 12 years later, I'm proud to say that eight of those nine members are no longer on that board. And a new group whose priority is to now put the assets around these people that we have approved over these years. Thank you. Growing up in this township, I've seen the township building pretty much stay the same as it has been for 47 years. Uh, along with the police station, I am there twice twice a month with uh, serving with the youth aid panel, and I can tell that building is not in the best of shape. I'm for uh, infrastructure uh, upgrades. Uh, you need it to be a first class township, and uh, we must do it wisely, of course. We can you know go go beyond our our financial means, but I am on board with the uh, building a police station, the rehabbing the police station, and a, a new township building. Mr. Hart. A big part of the problem is communication. I've knocked on more than 500 doors, and a lot of those people were shocked to find that there was talk of a new police station and township building. But there's a need, there's needs, and I think the problem is that it, we haven't communicated well enough to residents about the um, condition of some of the buildings and that we need to make decisions um, and you need to get all the information out there before you can make the decisions. Of what I've, the library at the moment is the one that has the, um, we have the most information about and it's in very bad repair. Uh, there's some emergency repairs need to be done. Um, and again, this needs to be communicated and we need to make decisions wisely. Um, are we going to put a million dollars into a building that's falling apart or do we put more money into a much better building? So it's communication and getting residents involved in the decision. I don't think most people are aware of the problems with the building. 
Ms. Bowden? I think almost all of us would have to agree that making the conditions in which our township employees, especially our first responders, work to be the best they can possibly be. I don't risk my life going to work every day. Um, and I certainly wouldn't work in an office where I had to sit next to a bucket. So uh, I, th I think that we need to hold ourselves to a little bit higher standard there. <clears throat> um, as a bank manager for several years um, before I became a mom here, uh, I, I was working with, with businesses and residents of Haverford Township. And I would say there's a lot of places we can go and pay lower taxes, but that's not why we're here. We are here because we want to be the best and because we see that potential for our families. And another thing I learned in banking is that money is a function over time. It's not a static thing. It's not a check that you write today. Money today can be invested wisely and be so much more for our future. Money can be borrowed at different rates at different times. Rates are historically low, and we are poised in a perfect position to set ourselves up to really be grateful for the decisive action that we took in, in 50 or 100 years. And that's why it's important for me to be here today. Thank you. You might want to write this down. I agree with Ronnie O'Connor, believe it or not. Um, my, <clears throat> this township um, needs to take the next step. We have YMCA now, we have the quarry, we have our crack, and now we need to take the next step and put those buildings in place. Our, take care of our infrastructure. A new township building, a new police station, and a, and a, um, a, a library. I believe that, that working in a township where you're working next to a bucket of water dripping, and that, that is not what I see for Haverford Township. That's not what I want people, when they come to Haverford Township, to see. I want them to see a beautiful building. I want them to see a nice police station. I want them to see a nice library. We're trying to attract young families to this township. And in attracting those young families to this township, we need to have the services and resources for that. We are a, a, a community in which we are close to, to, um, to public transportation, close to the city. It's a great place. We just need to improve on it. We just need to take the next step, and that's, that's what we need to do. Okay, thank you. This next question, uh, I'm going to start with you, Mr. O'Connor, so just to give you a little warning. Um, this, again, we have three questions that, I'm, we're, that we're grouping together. Um, they're, they're about the budget, okay, about the um, Best, this one's about the best way to address, for the board to address budget shortfalls. This is about whether there's anything in the current budget that you um, personally don't support or wouldn't like to see continue. Um, there is a specific question about moving to uh, once a week trash pickup, for example, and um, uh, some concern about the recycling program. So uh, let's wrap it up as a general question about whether there's, whether you see opportunities to save, reduce uh, in the budget, or on the flip side, um, where they're not, how do we, how do you recommend filling the shortfalls? Mr. O'Connor. Um, first, we currently have a outstanding public works, the uh, township of services, good fire departments, uh, trash collection. I still think I, I myself prefer two days a week. Having, you know, it's maybe a, you know, having a family of four, the trash piles up rather, rather quickly. Um, areas we could, uh, as far as trim the budget, I would look at, um, uh, actually I think everything is going, pretty well right now as far as uh, taking uh, any drastic changes. Mr. Holmes.
Township, I worked closely with our, uh, the head of our finance committee, and for the last term, I have, uh, I have been the head of the finance committee and have studied the budget uh, uh, every one of those years. Every year we go through the very painful process of trying to determine what is superfluous and what is necessary. And each year, um, people demand more and more services from the township, and we try our hardest to provide those services to people um, in a way that's most, that's most efficient. Um, when you talk about what would I do about a budget shortfall, I, I, don't, I don't recognize the idea of a budget shortfall. Every year it's going to cost us a certain amount of money to raise and to, to provide the services that we provide to have for township. And there are various ways to bring in the revenue necessary to pay for those expenses. One of those, and it's the most obvious to all of us, is our property taxes. We also have various fees that we charge. We also have some money-making enterprises that the township uh, owns, such as the stadium, such as the, the new uh, uh, community recreation and education center, I'm sorry, environmental center. Um, this is all part of the analysis that goes into trying to provide the best services to the township through our, through our budgeting process. But we still have some vestiges of 19th century way of thinking. There are some things that we do that I think are excessive. Um, but another thing you have to do as one member of a nine person board um, is that I can't stand my feet and demand that we no longer do this or we no longer do that. Any one of us who serves on this board knows that it's a process of all of us figuring out what the priorities are. I personally have expressed very strong views about collecting leaves in the past, but I also know some of my other commissioners and their constituents have very strong views about it as well. And that's why I think the budget is good, but I think every year it's a process. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hart? Um, I'll agree with some of the things Mr. Holmes said. I do some ways to um, save money for the township. Um, if we are able to expand the, recy the recycling program, it saves us money. You know, the more um, things that are recycled, the less goes into the trash stream, and the less money we pay for that. So um, continuing to try to expand that and to make residents aware of the fact that it saves them money if they recycle. If we were to do new, new building, um, sometimes you have to spend money to uh, save money. Uh, the buildings can be much more energy efficient. Uh, none of the township buildings are energy efficient at the moment. The library uh, is very energy inefficient, so it would be another way that we would, in the long run, save money. Um, and the other key thing for the township is to try to um, develop more businesses in the township. Um, the Quarry Center certainly will help bring in more tax revenue uh, and will um, lighten the burden on, on township residents. We've got to do everything we can to encourage new business in the, in the township. Mr. Oliva. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, again, the, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about some, some of the things that we've done uh, to reduce the budget. Um, and, and the things that have happened, the only way, we're a built-out community, so the only way for us to, to collect taxes is through either raising your taxes or through business development. And I'm, I'm in favor of doing much more business development. And just over the last year, uh, we have opened, um, I would say, 15 new businesses in Hanford Township, from the, the Giant and the Lewis, from the Quarry Center, from Breeders Water Ice, the Goodwill, the Angelo's Cafe, the Pep Boys, Krispy Kreme, um, the, the YMCA, the Cross Bar, the Edgewood Cafe, uh, and before us it has just opened, and the, uh, the Havertown Grill. Those, those, uh, that's what's going to keep us together. That, that Quarry Center has added $400,000 worth of new taxes to this township. That's how we can keep ourselves going because we have cut the budget as low as we can cut it. We have cut 18 full-time positions. We have um, we've taken we've taken it as low as we possibly can go and provide the services that are necessary for the township. So uh, my my next move uh, is is to improve business development in the township. Ms. Bowser. I'd like to agree with what Commissioner Oliva said and, and build on that a little bit because I, I have to agree. I, I've been through budget line by line. I, 
there's some things that surprised me or, or, or I wondered about, but in the end, when I, I looked into it, there, we're, we're running about as tight as we can. These guys are doing a really good job with that. Um, and many, many of the current commissioners own that. It's a question, again, of, of driving revenue without raising the taxes. And I think that the folks who have come to Hamilton Township and opened their businesses have found not only 50,000 wonderful residents of Hamilton Township, they've found many surrounding residents who come through our township on a regular basis. And they're building this tremendous extended community here. And it's a wonderful thing. But how do people who are thinking of starting a business in the Philadelphia area or in, in you know, other areas of the East Coast, how do they know that this is a place that they want to be? Where is, when you come to our website, our township website has been dragged kicking and screaming um, out of the 1990s and into this century, but it has further to go. And you know, where is our active social media campaign? Where is our business development committee that our board has talked about that's never really come to fruition? Those are the things that are not very expensive to implement and could really bring 20 or 30 more businesses just like that to have potential. Mr. Morrill. Thank you. So there was two parts to that question. The original part, I believe, was priorities. And there's not a lot to add by the time you get to where Dan and I are on that. Question, police, fire, trash, first responders are clearly priorities. Now, I think I've established that the last thing I want to do is raise taxes. But I agree with the commissioners and the candidates up here that when you say we have profit-making entities in the township, we should work with those. Being job-friendly clearly improves the tax base. And then when one of the candidates said something about business development role. Well, I know a little bit about that. In one of my charitable activities, I am the business development manager for a group called the Catholic Business Network. What we do every month is get together and discuss business opportunities. If given the opportunity here in the township to be your commissioner, I would love to be involved, spearhead, work for, do everything possible, be the number one cheerleader for job and business development in Habitat. Okay, Mr. Siegel. Thank you. Uh, first, I, the premise of the question that we have a budget shortfall is simply not accurate. The township manager, who has been an extremely prudent um, keeper of our finances, gave a report that demonstrated that we are ahead of budget. We're ahead of budget because this board has done a lot to make certain that we manage our finances appropriately. We have a finance director who actually lives in the fourth ward who has made significant improvements in how we handle things. We have exceptional talent in our assistant township managers and throughout the township of all our employees. That said, when we talk about the budget, we have to think about what brings us forward in the future. It doesn't mean stagnation. It means we have to be innovative. We've cut jobs. The way you bring the township forward is to develop business, to make the climate better for residents, because if we develop business, improve our facilities so that residents who talk to me tell me they go to Ludington, as they do in the fifth ward, because it has parking, those things, people will come here. If they come here, our property values rise, everything improves. That's what we need to do. I'm a businessman in this township. I pay every tax this township assesses, so I feel it personally. And as a result, we need to improve all of those climates while managing our finances. We've managed our finances extremely well. Now we have to take on the task of making certain we are the best place people want to move. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, let's start with Mr. Hart for this next question. Um, Several of you mentioned uh, economic development and business development as uh, important strategies. So uh, there's a question that's come in about the Eagle Road corridor, um, uh, traffic issues, and it's poor organization as a business district. And uh, they'd like to know what you propose to do about the Eagle Road business corridor. Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart, you'll begin. Nice, easy one. 
Um, it's been a difficult uh, problem for many years. Uh, there have been different proposals. Um, one of the issues is you need to get the businesses on equal road to somewhat agree to whatever to one proposal, and I, I think that's um, obviously been a, a very difficult um, situation. They, they haven't been able to come up with a solution to that. Um, I would uh, the commissioners in general um, need to work with the, the business uh, businesses on Eagle Road. And this is a township-wide problem. I think everybody who goes from one end to the of Albert Town to the other becomes involved in a traffic jam there. One of the why is a wonderful um, addition to the township, but it certainly probably is not going to improve traffic on Eagle Road. Um, I wish I had a, a simple answer to that. It's going to be something uh, involving township and uh, local businesses. So. Ms. Bowsman. I think I'll, I'll start by saying um, I ran a business on Eagle Road for several years, and I'm not unfamiliar with it, although, you know, if there were traffic jams, I would go out there and try to open checking accounts, I'm not going to lie. But um, <laughs> that being said, there, there have been problems. I've actually noticed the flow improving a little bit with the added light at, at Hillcrest, so that's nice. Um, but there's more to be done. I think that I always go with the cliche of, of walkability, and I know people are tired of hearing about it, but, you know, you go down the shore for the summer and everybody pays a million dollars for a house and they can ride their bike to breakfast. And I don't see why we can't have a little more of that here. Uh, the, I'm proud of our board of commissioners for all getting together to, to purchase the uh, abandoned rail line. And the recreation department worked hard. Several of my friends brought their business people out to volunteer to put those wood chips down. And I enjoy taking my jogging stroller right up that trail to the lot. There have been proposals to do things like that on Eagle Road. It is difficult to get a consensus on how to do that. I think what we need here is leadership from commissioners saying this is what we need to do uh, to make it the best place and then hopefully finding a consensus through leadership and making it a little bit more walkable. And you know, the traffic that comes through there is traffic, but it's people from other communities coming here to spend money. So if the rest of us who live nearby walk, that's the best we can do. Thank you. Mr. Olivas. Yeah, um, well, I, I was out there raking those um, the wood chips out on that trail um, that, that goes from the back of boil oil all the way to, to the Y. Those are some of the things that we're doing and some of the plans that we have in the township to make the township more walkable. Um, I, I do want to uh, say that we've done a lot on the Eagle Road corridor. You're not going to do uh, much with the traffic on the Eagle Road corridor. People want to drive, they want to drive their cars. You know, we're going to have traffic on the Eagle Road corridor, but we have to put the Y in the Eagle Road corridor. If you take a look um, at some of the businesses, the Oakmont, uh, Burks, new signs, new lighting, uh, the, the, um, the parking lot, um, we're, we're beginning to get buy-in from the, from the businesses. And with the HPD, uh, which is to have a Partnership for Economic Development, that's the arm of the township in which we can independently go out and, and get these businesses to come in. We'll be meeting with those businesses um, at the End of uh, at the end of uh, November to have a meet and greet and sit down and discuss some of the needs of the businesses. Working together with those businesses, we can begin to to uh, clean up Eagle Road and work together to do that. But it, it's not it's not going to be done overnight, and we are working on it to to get the job done. Thank you, uh, Mr. Siegel. Thank you. Eagle Road is one of the toughest problems we face. When I became commissioner, I received an email from a constituent complaining about the traffic and telling me that I didn't know how bad it was. I turned my chair around and looked out the window of my office, which is smack in the middle of Eagle Road, and I said, yes, I do. Um, it is a difficult problem because it is part of the on-ramp to the Blue Route. It is a vital business sector but it is also difficult. I remember when my son was here tonight, would walk home from high school, and I would watch him trying to cross Eagle Road, and it was like watching someone play human frogger. It is extremely difficult of a situation. 
We have to move forward, though, because years ago when a business development plan for Eagle Road was proposed, there was a lot of misinformation that really alienated businesses. We need to work to, to do more to create a more business-friendly corridor. We're not going to be able to change the configuration of the road easily. PennDOT does not work well with us on Eagle Road or in many areas where we have traffic issues. So as a result, we have to take little steps forward. The Y is one of those, if you look, they've adopted the uh, plan for development similar to what Oakmont has. We need to move it to the middle and encourage businesses to buy in and to do, as Allison said, make it more walker friendly because we're not going to eliminate the traffic. We have to come up with slow but steady solutions. Mr. Moreau. Thank you. I don't have a position on, on the value of wood chips. I, I truly don't. But the traffic on Eagle Road, as difficult as it is, and my wife travels up and down Eagle Road every day going to the business that she owns and runs. So I have an appreciation for that. But I'm a rather plain spoken person. I can't tell you tonight what the be-all, end-all solution is. And I can't tell you that there's baby steps that I would take day one as a commissioner. What I will tell you is I will certainly look at it through the needs of the commuter, the needs of the business owners, and everyone else that has a stake in traveling on Eagle Road. Uh, Mr. Holt. Okay, Mr. Hart. Uh, I'm running because I care 
great deal about this community. I've lived here a, a long time, as I said in my opening statement, and it's been a great place for my family to live, and I want to see it continue to be a great place for my family and for other families. Um, coaching is a big part of this. I've really, I've probably coached 40 teams here. I can walk down any street and run into kids that I knew 10 years ago, and I, they're still here, and I want to see the community continue to grow and be as, as good a place for new families as it's been for mine. Um, I, as Mr. Hall, I, I know Chris Connell pretty well. I've actually coached a couple of his kids. I think Chris cares a lot about the community. He does a lot for the community. I just think I have a more other experience that I can bring to the board um, that can help make this Habitat continue to be the great place it's been. Okay. At this time, we've run out of time for questions, so we're going to move to your closing statements. Um, and we're going to begin with uh, Mr. Siegel. Thank you, and thank you to the league. Um, it's interesting because when I think about who I vote for in any election, whether the person has done a good job, or her can do a better job. And that really should be the measure that voters take, regardless of whether it's the fourth ward, the eighth ward, or any other position. That's what you have to look at. Has your elected official done the job he or she promised, and can the other person do a better job? That's the key. Uh, and that's also the way we have to evaluate people tonight. When you're talking about a commissioner, you're talking about local government. You're talking about the people who really make the difference. We've talked about Eagle Road. We've mentioned Leeds. We've mentioned the library. That's what the commissioners do. We help connect the community and the residents so that we can all live better. Because if you think about it, this township touches you in many ways far more than Congress does at times. And being a commissioner is that position where one person can really make a difference. And that's why I enjoy doing it so much. I work with neighbors. I get to travel around this township and talk to people and help people. Just like I do in my own business, I do that with residents so that I can really help the issues here are trash and snow and recycling, they're leaf collection. I'm glad they're not world peace because we wouldn't be able to solve a thing. But commissioners also have to define the future. And that means stagnation is not the answer. We have to move forward. We have to improve our infrastructure and do it responsibly. And we have to make sure that residents are informed so that they participate in the process and can tell us how they feel. I'm proud that residents remark that when they communicate with me, they get a lightning fast response. And I'm proud to be a commissioner, and I hope that all of you will vote for me again on November 5th to serve another four years. Thank you. Discussion. Clearly, democracy can be a little spirited and a little loud. In the beginning of the night, I told you why I got involved. Now I want to tell you who I am, and just as importantly, who I am not. I'm not the guy that says at a township meeting, I have not made a decision as to whether we're going to build a new police building or not. Yet, the commissioner's own website, and I quote, recommends construction of the township municipal building including in the same slide, police functions. There's a slide from his website. So there's no question as to where he stands on it. Now, I do not do political speak. That's probably obvious. Or legalese. I mean what I say, and I believe if you elect my opponent, it will cost you $3,960 again over the life of your mortgage. And that building will have a granite cornerstone or a brass plaque with the architect, the engineer, the builders, and all the commissioners' name on it, a, mo a monument to what they did. Between now and November 5th, I plan on continuing to go to as many homes as I can. And I respect the time that each person has given me at their door. I've been invited into many houses, been offered a few dinners, asked and answered a lot of questions. If you're still undecided after tonight's debate, please see my wife Bernadette in the back, wave honey, in the back of the room, and she can give you my contact information. 
and I'll come to your house or apartment any evening after 6.30, because once the sun sets, I don't want to visit people and surprise them at their door. Not once have I referred to the people of Haverford Township as voters. You are all so much more than that to me. You are lots of things. And one of the things I see is people first. Parents, children, workers, business owners. You are first and foremost the people who should be respected by their local officials. In closing, I would ask three things. That my opponent join me in asking every resident to come out and vote. I, ask you, I also ask you to elect Bill Gowey, auditor, and I ask God to bless Havertown and Mark. Thank you. Mr. Holmes.
in preparing for tonight's uh, debate, I watched the video of the 2011 Candidates Forum, where many of the same issues were touched on, a decaying infrastructure, a need for strategic planning. It is past time for us to act on them. I've not previously sought elective office, nor have I been overly involved in local politics, but I'm motivated to run now because I think I can make a difference for our community. I pledge to the residents that I will communicate with them on all township issues and advocate for both the 8th Ward and the township as a whole. I will be accessible and work tirelessly to problem solve. I will make decisions based on merit and not due to political influence. I ask for your vote and support on November 5th. Thank you again, everyone, for coming. Um, in closing, I would like to say that I never saw myself as a career politician. This is something that came upon me as a mom who was very concerned, and many of us here are parents, and that's, I think, the number one reason we're all involved is because we care about the future of the community for one reason or another, and many of us are, are very caring parents to our children and want to set the very best example. I know that that's what I had, and that's how I became civically engaged. I think a good example, a good analogy for this, I, I recently, in, in the last few years of my life, became a group fitness instructor at the community YMCA, and there is a theme there of inclusiveness. There is a theme of everybody comes to the party, and if you're new at it, that's okay that you belong here. And I want to bring that same feeling to politics. The same thing with getting up in front of my first exercise class. It scared me. But when something scares me, I grab it by the horns. And I look at this political race, and in all of my experiences with this, the same way. A lot of people I've spoken to say, oh, I don't like to get into that. It, it makes me nervous. You know, uh, my opponent and I would both agree that sometimes trying to get into a polling place is like running the gauntlet. and. <laughs> You know, um, I could certainly do better to make sure that it doesn't feel that way. I know that it's scary, but I want to tell people that if you get involved, if you grab it by the horns, that it becomes something empowering. And I've learned so much, and I'm so proud to live here. I'm prouder than I've ever been. Um, I feel a great sense of ownership now because I understand so much more about what goes into the hard work that our township puts forth, and I'm very proud. And I'm going to be very proud and excited to see the huge voter turnout that I know we're going to have on November 5th. And I'm asking people to vote for Allison Bowser. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the past eight years, I've had the honor and privilege of serving all of the residents of the second ward as their commissioner. This position is especially significant to me because I grew up in the second ward. I care about the neighbors and I care about the neighborhood. My father used to say, don't judge someone by their words, judge them by their actions. I trust that my actions in my time as commissioner speak clearly about who I am. I mentioned in my opening statement about walking along the improved Darby Creek on Sunday. We have come a long way in improving our township and we still have more work to do. I am committed to continuing the work and adding to the list of our improvements. As we move further into the 21st century, we need to position ourselves to the changes that lie, that lie ahead of us. Our future is something we create for ourselves. Issues like traffic, business development, infrastructure, open spaces, and our institutions all need thoughtful, collaborative, collaborative discussions. None of us have all the answers, but by working together I'm convinced we can find the answers and the will to implement them. I again want to thank the League, my opponent, and all those who came out tonight. I encourage everyone to come out and vote in this election. Voting is the cornerstone of democracy. And of course, I hope the voters in the second ward will vote for me. Thank you very much, and good night.
much for responding to our voters' questions and for telling us about your positions and, and, um, and desire to serve. Uh, thank you to everyone who came out from the League of Women Voters who also urges you to go out and vote. And um, could we have a final round of applause for our candidates?